In this video, I'm going to answer some of your comments that you have made in November. And it's been a month of rumors about Olympus closing down, about Olympus being sold. And then there was also a new lens roadmap that was kind of like an answer to those rumors from Olympus. In this video, I'm going to answer some of your comments you made during the month of November. But let's start. Hi there, I'm Peter Forsgaard, an Olympus visionary and a professional photographer from Helsinki, Finland. And before I start answering your most interesting comments from November, did you know that I have a Facebook group for this channel? I will put a link in the description of this video where you can find it. And it's all about talking about Olympus gear, image sharing, talking about photography. And then I also will start a monthly photo challenge in that Facebook group. So be sure to join that. And then also another thing, I do have a newsletter. It will be sent on Sundays and it will have links to my latest videos in case you've missed them. And also every video will have a recommendation of the week. Like this video will have a recommendation of the month in the end of this video. And this will happen every month as I will make a comments answered video every month, the last video of the month. Okay, this one is the first video of the month because last week was quite busy. I was renovating my office and which is still in the making, but we'll, we'll, we'll get back to that. But let's start to talk about the comments in the videos and let's see and uh, about the rumors I think that has been discussed enough Olympus is not going anywhere or is being sold anytime soon of course I can't say what happens in after 25 years but not anytime soon so but I think that all that is covered so let's talk about something else and in my depth of field video I gave a assignment that you should use uh, if 5.6 aperture and set your camera so that it is focused to three to four meters and then you will have with a wide angle lens you will have everything sharp from meter to infinity and I'm interesting to hear did you try that and if you did how did you feel about it so how was it was it hard or how, did you get any good images and are you trying to continuing doing that or you just didn't like it and want to ditch it and want to go back to shallow depth of field Everything is fine, but it would be really interesting to hear your comments down below in the comment section that how did you how did you feel? And if you have any links to your images, please share them. And the best place to share that is the mentioned Facebook group. And let's see what else did I have. Uh, and yeah, then there was um, a couple of comments about the uh, features in Olympus cameras. It was Dmitry Puskarev who's talking about exposure bracketing and he was uh, asking and I quote uh, Am I the only one asking for exposure bracketing in two-stop incre increments? How hard is that when competing cameras do it for years? What he's saying that uh, Olympus exposure bracketing does not have bracketing by two stops but there is a workaround for that. Use HDR which has a two two stop bracketing and you can use so that it won't uh, uh, kind of like blend the images together it will make individual images and that that's a workaround for that and i agree that there should be a two stop uh, bracketing in the bracketing menu but remember you can use hdr and have a kind of like a workaround for that and we will be right back after these messages then there was an interesting observation by, let's see, I'll get it light, was a close shot who said that I discovered a fun use of OI track. It will recognize pictures taken with my phone. I had taken some images with my Olympus and couple with my phone. All showed up in the push bin. I have since turned on track and shot a bunch of photos with just my phone. The images appear just like they were taken with my EM1. Nice. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting thing that I never really realize that if you have the OI track on your on on your phone you will have the GPS coordinates recorded by OI track and I think it's a very good because from the OI track app you can see your your path way where you're walking and that's very good to have if you you know traveling and, and taking tourist shots then you have your route where you are walking in, in uh, the recorded in the OI track and you will also have your mobile phones uh, or the mobile phone, the images that you took with your mobile phone recorded, the, or the, the, the GPS coordinate recorded into OI track. And I think that's a fun uh, 
feature and thanks close shot for for pointing that out i've never realized that what happens and then um, uh, about the rumors and, and olympus announced a lens roadmap and there is a video about that and and all these videos that i mentioned will have uh, a or there will be a link in the description of this video and uh, uh, about the lens uh, roadmap one of the lenses that people really want it, it comes up all the time is the 12 millimeter pro lens either 1.2 or 1.4 and i agree on that one i think olympus should make a 12 millimeter pro lens because the 12 millimeter f 2.8 or 2.0 lens is i think it's the first lens that olympus a prime lens that olympus made for micro four thirds system when they when they switched to micro four thirds and uh, to be honest that lens needs an upgrade and i think a pro version for that would be really really cool and let's see what else did i have here and that uh, uh actually that comment was from sheridan gaub as you see see from here and then there was another one um, ian bover was uh, asking about 50 to 200 millimeter focal length which actually was not in the in the um, roadmap for lenses and the reason he asks about that lens is that it used to be really popular in, in not micro four but in four thirds cameras when olympus used to make four third cameras the dslrs and um, i've never used those cameras so and, and that lens so I, I can't really say but it seems to uh, be and, and it seems that it is c quite a interesting focal length and um, it most likely would be pretty popular if any of you have used it and, and have experienced that lens, please let us know in the comments below what you think. Would, would you like to have a, what it's called, what it 50, let's, let me check, yeah, 50 to 200 millimeter lens. Would you be interested in lens like that? Please let me know in the comments down below. And let's see what was next. Uh, yeah, I was talking about uh, renovating the studio. How do, you, how do you like this surrounding? It's not ready yet. I still getting a new desk for my or, or a new new work desk and some some things are going to be a bit different but the setting will be almost like this i don't know if i'm gonna change it but if you have any ideas please let me know in the comments below and also what do you think about this setup the reason i'm doing this is that my office has been like a warehouse i have lots and lots of stuff and i'm getting rid of some of the, some of my old stuff and uh making things more simple and and will have for every piece of gear and every piece of equipment that i have will have its own place in this small office it's going to be great and also the thing is that i will have a permanent place for my camera and for my lights so all i have to do is sit on the chair i'm all set but we'll get back into that in in some time in december when i've finished this and um, but let's continue with the with the comments uh, let's see that's or then, yeah, and then there was some uh, funny, funny comment from Kez. He said that uh, when he watches my videos, there are always Canon commercials before my videos start. And that's kind of, yeah, there is an irony. I'm an Olympus visionary and, and then my videos are advertising Canon gear, but we can't, <laughs> I cannot do anything about what uh, 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 advertisement there will be. Of course, well, I could, but I don't want to do that. I think those are most likely because the ads that you get in youtube those are personalized and and that's why he's probably case he's brought, probably watched some canon stuff and he's been advertised to to get a canon camera but that's about other brands now then i had two videos about photography that was not about gear it was the composition video and then about depth of field and both of those got really a lot of comments and i'm really happy about that because I would like to do more of those videos but usually those videos they take so much more time to make and now that i have the new setup in the studio i will have more time to to make content and it's easier for me to make that content so i will start to make more Im the more images more f uh, videos about photography itself and uh, that's why i'm really happy that those videos got a lot of comments and uh, there was one um, depth of field video that had a comment about Phoebus Loxias very long comment but the first uh, sentence was really important it was and I quote is photography supposed to be fun for amateurs or not 
and then there was a lot of and he was he liked the video and stuff like that so it was not a critique but i think it, that's an important question and the short answer is yes but i will get a bit back to that but first i will uh quote uh, aerial cameras uh comment to another video and uh, and i quote him uh, I cannot self-critique. The happiness I experience while making an image always clouds the way, uh, clouds the way I look at it later. It, it's tough to admit your photo is terrible when the memory of making it was so enjoyable. And I think uh, this is a really, really interesting uh, thing. And, and as I said from from Loxia's, Loxia's comments, that yes, photography should be fun, and it's something that you do. Let's say that you or most of you have a nine to five job. It doesn't matter what it is, office, factory, whatever it is, doesn't matter. But what matters is what you do on your free time. And most of us should have a hobby. And I think photography is one of the best hobbies that you can have. And since it's a hobby, it should be fun. And if, if the fun gets out of the thing, you start uh, being too serious about photography, and it's um, then then it's not and you stress about getting good images you stress about getting likes from in instagram and flickr and facebook wherever you post your images and i i think that's that's the goal that a hobbyist should have and don't go away we will be right back after these messages I think the photographs has to come out of your mind. So the, the camera is only a extension to your mind. And I think that's very important to understand. Of course, there are a lot of people that are taking snapshots with the phone, snapshots with their, with their entry-level cameras. And that's totally fine because most of us like to have images uh, that are memories of our trips, of, of what I ate, what I had, what, I, what did I wear. All those images are really, really important to you. And I, I don't see that those images are bad and those images should be treated as memories or documentaries of your life. And those images are good in that sense. Those images do not have to be, uh, you know, anything for anybody else but you. And so does it. And, and I think something from that we should take into our hobby also. Of course, if, if you have an image that you like a lot and you have a good memory of it and and as, as aerial camera said here is that uh, the the um, the feeling afterwards is not that strong as making the image and and i think it's it's um, it's a it's a pity in a way because if you have a good feeling of them of the the time you took the image and praise that i think that's the most important thing in a hobby have fun taking the image. I have a lot of images that I just uh, taken but never really got back to those images. I just like the the process of making the image. And I don't really care if the image is not that good. Of course, if I can get a good image, and usually I do for some reason, uh, at least one or two images that are good and I like to share. But remember that uh, it's, it's more important for yourself to have fun and make images that comes within you. That's something about you and that reminds you of something. And um, yeah, I, I hope this makes sense. But uh, just to you know, summarize that, that make images for yourself and have fun. I think those are the most important things. And I, I really like those comments because they, they brought up a very important thing about photography. And then the promised tip or suggestion. If you have not seen any of James Pops' videos, I really recommend you go out and look at his videos. He's a British guy with a bit of a different style in his videos and also a bit of a different style in his photography. I think he's uh, making images for himself. And because he's doing that and he's been doing that for quite some time, those images are also appealing to others. So, of course, that is the goal, that we can make images that come within ourselves and then also the images that other people will like. I think that's the, the best way of doing it. But go and see James Pops' videos. I will have an end screen to one of his videos and also there will be a link in the description of the videos to his channel. And here is the video that I suggest. But hey, 
Thanks for watching and bye for now.